So I said, that's fantastic. Already Islam is having a positive effect on our lives. Islam was a distant religion abroad, wasn't it, in the Middle East, you never... But now it's here, isn't it? It's in our house now. <laughs> <laughs> it's Islamic Awareness Week at Bristol University, and a mixture of the faithful and the curious is gathering to hear a talk by the star turn, former Fleet Street reporter Yvonne Ridley. Brothers, sisters and friends, salam alaikum. Three years ago, she would have struggled to find anything to say to a group like this. But then, as far as she's concerned, she was a very different person back then. The Yvonne Ridley before 9-11 has been compared to Patsy Stone out of Absolutely Fabulous. I've been married three times. I've got an 11-year-old daughter. And I suppose even by journalistic standards, you know, it, it's quite a disastrous <laughs> life. In 2001, just as the so-called war on terror was getting underway, the Sunday Express reporter put on a burqa and crossed into Afghanistan to report on life under the Taliban. Yvonne was a, an inexperienced foreign correspondent, more experienced for ex foreign correspondents, had also thought of doing that. Uh, people on the Sunday Telegraph, people on the Times, their papers had all stopped them. They said, no, you're very likely to get picked up. I think she was foolish because she's a single mother and she plunged herself into a situation which could have had a terrible, terrible ending. Nobody would ask if any high-profile male war correspondents, um, you know, no one would probe into their private lives, saying what on earth did she think she was doing, going in there when she's got a child. This would never be asked of John Simpson. You become invisible, directly you put it on. No one even glances at women here. The big difference between John Simpson and Yvonne Ridley was that she got caught. She was held on spying charges and fully expected to be stoned. But instead of ending her life, her experiences in that Afghan cell were to change her life forever. For six days I had avoided talking about religion. And there I was confronted with a, a cleric. And I looked at him and I just thought, oh no, it's the God Squad. He asked me what religion I was, and I said, I'm a Protestant, the Church of England. And he smiled, and he said, and what do you think about Islam? Oh, I said, it's wonderful. I said, it's absolutely amazing. And he smiled again, and he said, so, you would like to convert? And I thought, if I say yes, he will accuse me of being a very fickle insincere woman if I say no he will um, accuse me of insulting Islam either way I'll be hauled off and stoned and I thought about it and I looked at him and said you know thank you very much for your kind offer but I can't possibly make such a life-changing decision while I'm in prison however if you let me go I will read the Quran and I will study Islam when I return to London. You know, that is my promise. Four days later, despite the fact that the coalition had started bombing Kabul, the Taliban took Yvonne to the Pakistan border and released her unharmed. I'm fine. Lovely. I'm uh, fine. It's good to be here. Thank uh, you. After all the fuss died down, I started reflecting on the visit that I'd had from the cleric. And, and I, I thought, thought, well, they've kept their word, and now I should keep mine. And I started to read the Quran, and I went through all the women's issues, because I had to find out what is in this book that promotes the subjugation and oppression of women. And there's nothing in there. Far from saying women should be oppressed, it says quite clearly that women are equal in spirituality, worth, and education. And furthermore, we're praised for our child-rearing and childbirth capabilities. capabilities. So in my book, that means that women are probably 
um, the deluxe model of the human being. Nobody's smiling over here, right. <laughs> I then looked at property and inheritance laws, things that have just come into the gift of Western women in the last 100 years. And, you know, it's, it's all there. It's like a Magna Carta for women. <laughs> I wanted to go running back to Afghanistan and say to my captors, hey guys, what have you been reading? You know, because did you know? <laughs> and I remember complaining about it once and this Muslim woman said, Yvonne, Islam is perfect. Unfortunately, the people who practice it aren't. And I thought, yes, she's right. Anyway, I'm very, very happy to tell you that I did take my Shahada on June 30th last year. And I have now joined what I consider to be um, the biggest family in the world. Just makes me so proud to stand before you today and say I am a Muslim. Thank you. Whatever her feelings for her new family, Yvonne still had to square her conversion with the old one. 